Hey guys, it's Troy. And Matthew. And we are here in St. Louis, Missouri. We came to the St. Louis Pen Show 2023. And the Pen Show right now is over. It's it's wrapped up. It's Sunday afternoon. Um, all the vendors have pretty much broken down and moved out. And we're sitting here 351 local time. Uh, and it's an hour off from what we're used to, but we're still trying to get used to central time. Uh, but uh, so far for us, the trip to St. Louis has been fairly decent. I mean, we came in a few days early. We did some sightseeing, took a trolley tour of the city, historic tours. We went to the top of the St. Louis Arch, uh, got some sightseeing, and, and then we started in the Penn Show on Friday. Uh, one of the cool things about coming here, and the reason we chose this Penn Show is because, um, first, it's vacation time. It's school is out, so... Uh, neither of my boys uh, nor my wife are in school, but we, uh, my wife, my son, and I decided to come here. We left one boy home with grandma, and uh, so we decided let's just do the St. Louis Pen Show. And the main reason is because there are people I've been wanting to meet. I've got some pen pals that were going to be coming to this particular show and a few vendors that I've only been able to talk to and see online maybe and uh, have communications with uh, whether as a Zoom call with our buddy Larry, uh, or whether it's by email, so we were able to actually see face to face some people. Uh, so that was uh, fairly decent. One of the main reasons we decided to come out. Go ahead. You had something you wanted to add? I was just waiting for you. <laughs> just waiting for me. So we're sitting here in our hotel room. Uh, we actually have the uh, College World Series game on, uh, so we've been following that a lot here lately just for fun, just because we could. But anyway, we want to do a pen haul video and uh, show you what we got. And the big winner over here probably is where we want to start. So um, each year they come up with a new ink for the St. Louis Pen Show. I have a bottle of the Meet Me in St. Louis ink that they had last year. And actually they have the Meet Me in St. Louis ink is a little different. This year it's called the Missouri Crawdad and it is uh, an orangey type ink and you know, I'm just trying to get this box open but uh, KWZ makes some decent inks and they are the official ink maker for uh, the pen show here. But uh, here you go. Here's um, We didn't do an ink uh, swatch of it because we're in our hotel room. We haven't made it back home yet to, to play with it but it, there was, uh, there were a couple of door prizes. We never win anything, usually. But uh, somebody was picked as a door prize winner. So, why don't you tell us about it? No? What do you think? We're, talk, speak up so people can hear you. So, basically, I was chosen as a door prize winner. Which was a... All right, the door prize was that bottle of ink, and there was a pen made. There's a show pen this year. A lot of, uh, that happens a lot with uh, different uh, different uh, pen shows, but Hardy Penwrights, you know, we run across them at, uh, you know, DC Pen Show, Raleigh Pen Show, um, and here in St. Louis. Well, Greg Hardy, showing the pens on, uh, created the show pen. You want there, I'll yeah, it's kind of a little different. All right, see, we're not going to do any real editing for this video today. We're just on my iPad here in our hotel room. I didn't bring a whole edit system with me, uh, but so here we are just on my iPad, one straight recording, probably no editing. So uh, we're just going to kind of wanting to wing it. So it's got that those beautiful orange swirls in the acrylic, and we'll probably go ahead and ink it up with that very ink, the show ink to go along with it, so... But, uh, so this is like my bragging pen now. There's only like a limited. Yeah, so there, were only, there was only a limited edition made of these. And Matthew was selected uh, to be a door prize winner. So, congratulations. And then it has that nice little thing on the cap. Along with that, they gave him a bottle of this teal ink. David Oscarson ink. Now the bottle looks mighty familiar to me. Almost looks like cross... Um, inks. It may very well be, but it is branded for David Oscarson. And this bottle happened to be leaking a little bit, but um, it's supposedly unopened, and so we'll clean that bottle up a little bit. 
Uh, we've got a Ziploc bag to keep it in, to keep it from leaking. So uh, that's one of the things that we picked up. So let's uh, try to keep it moving right along. Um, in terms of inks, we picked up a bottle of Diamine the Flamingo Pink, which my bride selected. We ended up getting a bottle, and somebody gave us this bottle while we're here, Colorverse Indigo Blue. It also turned out to be an ink that I use quite a bit because, you know, Friday we didn't do really much for purchases at all. Um, we actually walked around the show a lot. And uh, Saturday is when we did most of our purchasing. Uh, and most of the pens that we ended up getting Friday night, I'll explain that in a second, and Saturday, uh, I ended up inking up with that indigo blue because that's all we had. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, start with one, some of the first purchases that we made. Let's see if this one is yours or your mama's. Oh, that's your mom's. Chronological order. So, yeah, we're going chronological order here. Epitome Pens. Uh, there's a guy named Vinny. Well, I mean, that's his nickname is Vinny. Um, and uh, he is, I thought, out of like Minneapolis. And uh, he has Indian made pens. And we stopped by his table, and he happened to have... Do you want to show it, or do you want me to show it? I'll show you. Okay. He had a nice little, like, four pens that were ebonite, and this is the one that I chose. So it's a, it's a black and red swirl ebonite that's lacquered. The Tony Rustiki calls it the Spider-Man pen. Yeah, so they were saying, hey, look at that. That's Spider-Man colors. So that's what they're calling that. And I think they have a house nib. I don't think you put a Yolo nib in that, but uh, it's a yep house made. It has the um, logo on it. So the epitome, the epitome pens. Yeah, the camera's actually over on that side over there. So there I can go. see it a little bit, right? Yep. There. So that was our first real purchase of the pen show, um, and that was uh, one I made for Matthew. Well, later on uh, Saturday. My wife also went down to Epitome Pens. We talked to Vinny again, and she got an acrylic, purple and black swirl acrylic right there. If it's purpley and pretty, that's going to be right up her alley. So, uh, let's see. It's purple. She loves it. Yep. So, uh, let's see. The... Was it Friday night that they had the auction? Um, yeah, it was Friday because last night we went down. And That's right. So Friday night, uh, they had a pen auction. And I participated in the auction. Um, and we got a sheet over here that to give you an idea. Uh, Matthew's going to grab it here and give you an idea. That the, the auction wasn't huge. Um, but they, you know, they had a... Like that. And then here. Uh, for, so this is a listing of all the pens that were on it. And I sat through most, uh, well, I sat through the whole auction, and the one that I got was the third one on the list. So um, I ended up putting in a bid for 50 bucks to get a Waterman Charleston, and I, I won with a $50 bid. A Waterman Charleston for 50 bucks. It's, it's hard to beat that deal right there. So I ended up with that. All right. So um, I've got that one inked up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something I forgot to say about the St. Louis show. Pause for that commercial interruption. One of the things about this particular pen show, because I meant to bring this out earlier, um, they seem to be one of the classier pen shows that we've been to. Uh, we don't go to them all. We haven't been to a tremendous amount of them, but Raleigh and D.C. and here, and this seems to be one of the better run shows. It's more organized than It some really others. does seem to be more organized. A couple of uh, misconceptions that we had... People had told me it's one of the smaller shows. It's not, it's actually. Big. It's big, a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's definitely bigger than the Raleigh show, which, by it's the way, this last small. time was really small compared to normal uh, because of a new venue. So a um, little lackluster on, on the, the Raleigh show, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, they you go to D.C., they give you like a, a little, sometimes a little tote bag and usually put out by Yaffa Brands uh, as our sponsor. But they actually had a nice messenger style ballistic nylon you know over the shoulder bag and uh, it's big enough to throw in notebooks say you know a4 size notebooks and stuff so this is what they handed us when we got here uh, so we got one of these and we'll be using this for other pen shows as well so 
just over the shoulder right there. Now, in terms of handbags, that's the other thing that we got from our, our friend Vinny, our new friend Vinny over at Epitome Pens is he gave us each a, a tote bag. So we got two um, tote bags because we made two purchases. The so. message, the messenger bag, is actually very comfortable because I'm the one who's been like holding yeah, it. Yeah, he's been carrying it most of the time. And it's actually pretty comfortable to have around your shoulder. Yeah, so we'll be probably carrying that to the DC show uh, because quite honestly, I like it better than some of the other stuff yeah. that we've been using. All right, so I won that uh, back to the uh, the showing of the, our booty. We got uh, that Waterman Charleston that I picked up at auction. The auction was funny because uh, we had a friend of ours, uh, we're not going to mention his name, uh, but they had a pen, an ASC uh, bronze Arco pen that was brand new in a box, and they had um, put a value on it somewhere around $2,500. It was donated, and so they wanted to start the bidding out at least $1,000. So this guy got the bidding going at 1000 bucks. It's 2250 2250 was the, yeah, the MSRP on it? Okay. So he throws out the first bid, hoping to get it kicked off, and it'll drive the price up. Nobody else bid. He sat there for minutes upon minutes <laughs> begging. Yeah, they, they, they were imploring people to please kick in, please, you know, please uh, jump in on it. Then the and, person who was running the auction was like, it can't sell for this low. Come on, help bring it up. And yet our friend was sitting there going, come on, guys, come on, come on, come on. And then later on, he's doing this deal. No, no, no. <laughs> and, and they called the auction, 1000 bucks that he didn't plan on spending. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> he had to whip out his credit card, pay, pay the bill. Um, and that was kind of funny. That We actually had a good time at the auction. And I, I actually bid on several other pens. Um, and I knew what they were worth or what they were worth to me. And I wasn't willing to keep going higher. So... Anyway, all right, back to the pen haul. Um, you know, my wife, I told you she likes um, pretty things, pretty pens that are purple. Well, she picked this one up, and she got this one at Country Made Pens, uh, Troy Breeding. And this was on sale. Apparently, he had some models that had been sitting for a while uh, that were left over that he wanted to, to get out. So we picked this one up 50% off. It's real pretty. It doesn't have a clip on it or anything, but it's still gorgeous. <laughs> nice uh, Yovo nib on it. So that is now in my wife's collection. And we went back there today, and Matthew went and visited the same folks. Country made pens. And had to be like mommy, buy from the same place. So go ahead and show the one this you got. Is, he has some discounted pens. And this Speak one, up. This one was 40% off. And it's a very pretty color with like kind of, what do you say, burgundy? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it, it, it could be. Mm -hmm. It kind of like a burgundy and then it's oh, has those some white swirls white. in it. It looks really neat. It's a very, very beautiful pen. Yeah, so I bought that one for Matthew. That has been added to his collection. So. And this one also, this one is a medium nib. Yeah, so you put a, a nice little medium nib in there. Yep. All right, so. On to the next one. My wife liking all things purple. Little the little Mackie uh, Platinum Preppies. This is only a, a $10 purchase uh, while we're there. Might as well throw out. We picked that from Lemur since we had to have their card sitting here. But that's where we got it. So a nice little $10 uh, purchase. Let's keep it going. Um, I talked to a gentleman whose name is Larry Heron. He's got a lot of old uh, pens that he uh, had for sale. And uh, he also is an author, and he's got a bunch of books. So I had stopped at his table, and he gave me this particular book on the origin of man and the universe. And uh, I went ahead and purchased a book that he had there as well on the origin and survival of the species. Uh, so I got some stuff to read, but I also went shopping on his table, and I found an Omos Paragon, a nice vintage Omos Paragon, and I have inked this baby up, and it writes great. You know, the piston's a little tight, uh, but it actually works very, very nicely. It writes spectacularly well, so I'll be using that quite a bit. Uh, let's see, next... My bride decided, because my birthday is coming up soon, uh, to go ahead and pick up for me while we were shopping. Um, 
a modern version of Wall Eversharp Skyline. I've got a bunch of uh, vintage ones. I've restored some. I've given some away right here on this YouTube channel. Uh, but I went ahead and picked this up. I had been balking at the idea of getting one for a long time. The, the price was just, no, that's too much for me to really consider based on the idea that I don't know how well it's going to write. And I haven't had really good success looking at modern reincarnations of old uh, vintage names. Um, I do have a Wall Eversharp deco band that I've got, which is a you know newly released thing, and but this, eh, but found a really good price. This was being offered for like eighty dollars. So all right, let's try it. Well, it turns out not only is it eighty bucks, the nib alone is worth eighty bucks because it actually has um, a gold nib. On this thing, so it's a pure gold nib. it does it does have a gold nib. Ooh. So, um, and it's uh, one of the things too is it is a cartridge converter. However, the converter is built in to the pen, so it, it's not a piston filler where the the barrel is actually the reservoir. There is a converter that's like permanently mounted inside of this thing. So, and I tried it out. It actually writes really really good. So I was kind of surprised um, how well that wrote for me. Uh, keep rolling. Oh yeah. Friends over at Federalist Pens. Told you my wife likes all things purple. Well, she found this pen on, uh, I, I won't say on sale, but at a really good price. Over at Federalist Pens, federalistpens.com. My buddy Frank over there had the Peniter Metropolis. You know, it, it's one the lower end and Peniters, but um, it actually seemed to be a really nice pen rugged and for that yeah so for what it was we went ahead and picked that up um what happened to this one aha oh yeah and that birthday purchase we also found one of these at the same table where we picked up that ever sharp skyline yeah a waterman phileas 35 dollars never been inked 35 bucks i never see a Waterman Phileas for $35. So we went ahead and snatched it up for 35 bucks, even though I've got a bunch of them already at home, 35 bucks, we're getting another Waterman Phileas. <laughs> so that goes uh, into the collection as well. And somebody is ending up with it. I never had one before. You have like 15 to 20. I don't, I don't have that many. <laughs> But, uh, but here, Shredley over here was begging for it. Can I have one? I want one. Can I have it? So, yeah, my birthday present is going to him instead. Which is only 13 days after your birthday. Uh, 11, really. Oh, wait, yes, 11. Wait, what did I say? You said 13 days. Oh. But, yeah, 11 days after mine. But All right, also here at the St. Louis Show... Wrapping up um, our pen haul. Um, yeah. That little sticker. Yeah, that's going to end up probably on one of my boys' laptops. I got They gave me two stickers while I was there. And we had to, you know, we got these little name tags that we wore. This one's mine. So we got lanyards and name tags. So, so we could feel important. <laughs> I got... Um, just, I think that's most of the pens. I think I got just two more to show. Okay. So not that I really needed another one, but I found a fairly decent deal on a restored Parker Vacuumatic. It's got the stripe double jewel on it, a nice flexible nib. I did get a chance to dip test it and write with it. It wrote great. I haven't filled it up in, uh, with ink yet, so it hasn't been inked up. But it was freshly restored, um, and I can't remember the guy's last name. The first name was Francis. Francis, and it was like Bella Yoga or Bella. I know it started with a B. Yeah, so he's from. Uh, oh, it's Bell Dolan, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I think he's out of the he, Minneapolis area. He's a uh, oh, well, he's out of Minnesota. Uh, so we'll see him again in D.C. So I'm sure we'll uh, find a way to, you know, to catch up with him later. At the same table though. We got to talking about nursing pens because Matthew stopped and looked at an old Waterman nurse's pen from like the 1940s. And I said, ah, a nurse's pen. 
and uh, there Francis was like, oh yeah, that's yes, that's a nurse's pen. We started talking about nurse's pens, and because I've got one and I've done a couple videos here on this YouTube channel, and even showed uh, a recent uh, acquisition of a uh, nurse's pen that was a thermometer holder, um, we started talking about nurse's pens, and I gave him some references where to go look online uh, to find them uh, for information. And uh, so we started talking about that, and he said he actually had one, a uh, thermometer uh, pen. Now, here's this one here, no branding on this one. Now, usually nurse's pens are uh, Waterman, some Schaefer, Esterbrook, but this one here had no branding on it at all. So uh, we went, in, and he wanted like $25 for it. Well, what made it worth that $25, because it's unbranded, no naming on it whatsoever is actually had a vintage thermometer still in it. So for 25 bucks, and it's got a it's got a tension bar in there to hold it in place so it doesn't jiggle around so and you use it like you, you actually take the you, you pull it out. Yeah, and well, in days of old, you actually <coughs> you actually would have you know the thermometer that we have in our laundry room that has the mercury that oh, reads yeah. up and down. It's the same thing in, in a little thing like this. Let me get a sip of hotel tap water. Still cold. St. Louis water. Actually, the tap water here is very warm. And the hotel ice that we got out of the ice machine is pretty much already melted in that cup. But So anyway, it actually has a thermometer. And you can see this one goes up to like 108. And you would actually pull the thermometer out. And you would stick it in your mouth and... Hmm. So, there you go. So, for 25 bucks, I picked up this to add to my collection, just to have it in the collection. So, hey, cool. LSU just had, like, a couple of home runs. 12 to 3. Yeah, and scored. Florida scored a home run. Yeah, 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 Florida just scored against LSU. It's 12 Like, to a couple three. of home runs. Wow. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, lastly, um, we stopped by this one table uh, where they do a lot of pen holders and they do uh, organizers and um, they do 3D printing. And they had a bunch of what they call one-offs or misfits and they had slight blemishes like you can see right there. Uh, so instead of selling these at full retail price, they were selling these for five bucks. Five. I'll take a smudge right there, thank you very much. And instead of paying, what, 20, 25, or however much they were charging, five bucks. So I got a buddy who does uh, 3D printing. Hey, dude, there's an idea for you. All right, so nice, cool pen holder. Well, that's the second one I bought. The first one I bought was this one. This is a pen holder. And he, he explained that it didn't finish. And um, that's why they put it for five bucks because they had a power outage when this was printing. And he said it takes like 22 or so hours to print these. And uh, power went out, so it just stopped. So they had full size ones uh, that were a little taller than that. Uh, but so they were selling this one here. I was like, I'll take that for five bucks. It's still functional. It you, still holds you pens. You can still put pens in there just because they don't have a couple of hexagons yeah, or no whatever kidding. shape that is. The cool thing is you get to see what the, uh, the inside of it looks like. So I thought that was cool for five dollars. But then a tiny little smudge right there and right there for five so, bucks. Yeah. So why not? It doesn't even matter if there's a smudge. Still one, two, four, five, four, sixteen right. pins. All right. So takeaways uh, from here. I think that's pretty much our entire pen haul. Does that look like everything? Yeah, wait. Do we show other stuff that we got on the trip? No. Yeah, just uh, stick it to the pen haul uh, stuff. Um, so I'm thinking we'll just stick with that for this video. Um, what are some of the takeaways? This is probably one of the better shows that we've been to, Raleigh this year. Um, personally, in my opinion, it was not its best. It was fairly small to switch venues. Right. And but yeah, this is probably the bet the best show that we've been to out of like all of them. We we did not come with any particular agenda as to what to buy. Uh, we just went ahead and said we're going to look around. My primary purpose was to meet people, to hang out, and get and just have fun. 
a lot of vendors that we've seen at other shows because you know they kind of go like gypsies from place to place some people we've never met we and we met some new vendors made some new friends along the way uh, and got to meet friends that we've only known online and so that was great we've got a chance to see a city that we've never been to before uh, and got a chance to see about all, all that st. Louis seems to have to offer by the way the barbecue you have to offer North Carolina's got you beat <laughs> and by far we tried barbecue at three different places North Carolina barbecue still rules reign supreme the best barbecue we had was probably at one of the restaurants at the hotel yeah right around the behind beside the hotel it's it's and, and it's a saloon and they had they had better barbecue than barbecue restaurants even some that were featured on food network oh anyway place we had lunch at not impressed <laughs> so anyway um uh, some other takeaways very well run show and i talked to some of the people who are coordinators it's a 501c3 corporation that runs the st louis uh, pen show and uh, they take care of their vendors uh, they uh, they feed them lunch they make sure they get breakfast especially if they're staying here at the hotel us as show attendees we booked through the website um, and through the the pen show venue getting the pen show rate and along with that came um, little certificates to have breakfast and they did have a a small breakfast buffet which was basically a breakfast meat scrambled eggs uh, some breakfast potatoes uh, so, some yogurt, maybe some uh, muffins, Tomato coffee, and juice, oatmeal and oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't like it, but it was okay. Uh, so anyway, that came along with it. So that was well planned and well thought out. They wanted to make sure that they gave you a value for staying here. Um, and that made it a little better and more worth it as a, an attendee, as well as for the vendors, so they didn't have to spend their own money uh, to come and participate just to get breakfast and lunch. So that was well thought out. They, they're taking looking after the people who helped make this show possible. Um, the show, the way it was laid out, much wider aisles than we're used to seeing in DC and much wider space between vendors who are back to back. So they're not slamming their chairs back to back in, and running into each other. Um, I realize DC is the biggest show in the world. They have a limited amount of space, so they have to cram as much as they can. Um, they didn't have to do that here, but the show we were told was gonna be a small show. No, no, it's actually much bigger than we thought it was gonna be. And I, I told them, well done, and well even, planned. Even when the show was packed, it's still like, you still have room to walk. Yep. So for us, I enjoyed the show probably more than most of the other pen shows we've been to. Uh, just because of how well it was organized, how well it was laid out, the fact that you weren't um, always on top of other people. And um, just, it was enjoyable for us. Um, but after our first two days, I'm like, oh, all about pen showed out. We already did a Raleigh show. We're doing St. Louis. Do I even want to go to D.C. now? I want to go. I'm about Penn showed out. I'll actually have a budget. Yeah, possibly. Possibly so. So anyway, that's where we're at, guys. Um, like I said, no fancy editing on this video. It's just us in front of my iPad doing a recording, and we'll do the upload here shortly. Um, and if you have any questions, get a hold of us. All the contact information generally is in the bottom of our video descriptions, which I'll probably add in, you know, edit this video, but after we get home, because I didn't drag my laptop here with all the information on it or the editing software. So anything else you wanted to add, buddy? Thank you for buying me some pens. You're welcome. So that's it. All right, guys, we'll see you. Uh, for those of you who'll be in DC, look for us. We'll, I'll have some of these t-shirts and uh, look forward to talking to you all later. Bye.